Good on my friends, this is Rick, and this is your seat at the table, and we are looking at an adventure module of my own creation. Right? Uh, this is actually an example of back when I was really running uh, games on a weekly basis and had uh, the, the time and effort to, to really put some work into things. And so this was a, a campaign that I did for, uh, I had two players at the time, and as a matter of fact, uh, Medley, the uh, one of the two, uh, moved back to town recently, and uh, now lives uh, a couple miles down the road from me. Uh, I had him over yesterday to kind of get back to bases with him. It's nice to see a good old friend, a, a, a longtime friend, return to the neighborhood, and uh, looking forward to potentially uh, connecting more with him and, and reestablishing our, our friendship. Uh, the other fellow, the young fellow who played with us, is uh, uh, he. I think he. He had joined a service, moved out, or moved out of, the, out of the state. I don't remember what happened to him, but it only had two players at the time, and we got together on uh, every Friday night and played for about five hours. And so I would work on the project, and I would work on my next session uh, during the week, and I had uh, did everything on the computer and stuff, and then printed them out. And over time, I basically just kept track of all of them and stuck them together because of you know, and if never one knew how I was gonna. I don't know why, but this is kind of how my, my game sessions and adventures and campaigns turned out. I used to have numerous of these things, and I've gotten more better at them over time. It also gives a little insight into how I like to run things and how I set up in my pre-work. So the gist is, well, perhaps not the most glamorous of jobs, hauling freight for the haul is one of the important ones. Supplies are needed to keep outposts and watchtowers stocked. Far-flung mines uh, need a steady stream of tools, while raw ores they produce need to, are needed to keep the mighty forges at Crystal Gorge productive. Economics is the lifeblood of any civilization, and for the stalwart clan, this is no, no less true. While the honest hard work, the life of a drover is no less uh, an adventure. Rugged mountain roads, unpredictable weather, the occasional ill-tempered beast, or an orc raid promises to keep one's axe sharp. Responding to postings, you arrive at the Hall of Daggett Hauling, one of the largest freighters in the Crystal Gorge. Cod Daggett's office is just inside the main hall where you can see a dozen heavy wagons, several undergoing repair in one corner near a busy workshop. The large carts uh, uh, opposite wall houses doors to the stables where a dwarf can be seen running a brush over a large Clydesdale. Other dwarves are, go about their business keeping the place busy. A few nod or give bland greeting as they pass by. Uh, Outside of Daggett's office is a pair of road and dusty wharves uh, lounge as a furrier looks over their team. One, a blonde haired dwarf with a bearded ring, a beard ring of beaten silver snorts as he looks over you. Oi, Fargan, Hargan, will you look at just dropped off, uh, dripped off on Morden's nose? The blonde one says with a, a draw. Uh, the one named Fargan, a stocky black bearded dwarf with shifty eyes, gives a turtle. Must be new drovers, Jenrick. Don't look like much. So, at the end of the day, what we've got is two players, uh, starting with first level Dwarven characters, and their job is to drive wagon, supply wagons, to various locations and back again. So we're actually running something like a circuit, and they'll return to uh, the main, the uh, to Crystal Gorge, the main uh, Dwarven uh, Citadel, on a regular, semi-regular basis. They also have what's going to be the competition in some aspects. It's not it's not just the road and, and the weather and, and bad guys on the road, but you actually have another pair of drovers who are con consider themselves the top dogs and don't take it kindly when other people not, uh, come in and try to take their glory. And in some aspects, occasionally make an attempt to uh, sabotage uh, the player's success when they can. Uh, so we got an older stout, you know, here we got the older dwarf come in. I get the information for uh, uh, Cod Daggett and his, his, his business. This opening description for, this, for the characters, uh, for me to read to the characters. I read that portion and then I pause. And, and that's what these, these things here all the way through are after a, pa uh, after a pause for suitable discourse. So the NPC says his two bits gives the characters an opportunity to respond and then I go forward with the next set and the next set and the next set and uh, so we got the description of the wagon then Brewer's Hall where they get their first load and they deal with the ones there uh, 
you know, pouch that holds 25 gold pieces, assuming that they all agree on that amount, of course. Uh, Hunter casts the dark bitter fresh from the vat this morning. He waves you over, standing at work desk where he stamps and signs your letter. Doris begins loading the wagon as he hands back the letter. Ting purses his lips and looks awful. He lads up for making a few extra gold coins. You see, I promised Ingot down at the high watch a few crates of Raven Sharp. That's a potent liquor, and if you don't know, if you don't know, it'll be for the Keep's Lord Commander's table. Quite valuable as it aids a hundred years before you. it's smooth enough to enjoy. Fishes out a small pouch from a cubby and a desk. If you're interested, I usually have bargain take it, but the lad didn't get the beer run this week. See, now you understand why the uh, other NPC drover is going to be a, a bit of, uh, you know, going on. So, in any case, uh, you'll have to split it with your partner. And Ting steps around the desk, picks up two crates. Each holds a dozen bottles of a rich dark brown liquor and offers them to you. Take care that you don't break them. Each bottle is worth a piece. The master brewer takes his leave and attends his duties. Twenty minutes later, the crew chief waves that your wagon's ready. And then an easy spot check. If you climb up in the wagon, you notice the loaders have not strapped down the load. If you didn't notice, you might have some broken kegs before you get down the, the mountain. So then we stop at Dangit's General Store. On the road to high watch, base movement. So I got it already figured out base movement for the wagon, how long, how far they would probably travel. You know, the first day I like weather events too, so I check weather. First day weather is normal. Counter one. Yeah, see, halfway through the day, a road comes around uh, to an area cut between uh, high stone walls. A steep incline meets a sharp curve. If the PCs didn't spot the unstrap load, handle animal check DC 15 is required. Handle check uh, handle handle animal check DC 10 is required. Failure if they did notice failure comes to cause us to load the shift, forcing the wagon to lean precariously to one side. Two wheels come off the ground. Any further movement causes the wheels to on a slow slide to become badly damaged. The unstrap load sends one D6 cast tumbling off the wagon. Roll one D6 for damage for each of them with a hardness of five hit points. Experience points, uh, how much I would uh, reward them based on what they were successful at doing and preventing the accident from happening. Uh, then they arrive at, uh, you know, at the first uh, the first uh, outpost, which is High Watch. And what's your business at High Watch? Pause for discourse, talk to the guards, uh, then go to the deliver the cargo and then to go to the headless giant inn and advent potential adventures there, so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through the entire entire thing here but uh, what I would I would try to do and I figured how uh, what the average encounter should be timeline wise and I would try to have four or five potential encounters pre-set up for the players and then of course always took it, tried to take into account that the players may always do things that were un, un, unplanned and we would go accordingly and I kept notes and then all my notes basically and when I got time I took it to the computer and I typed it all in and put it down and kept track of it and this is how this all plays out and there's you know Here's a encountering a face, a, a, a sweet thistle and shimmering. Encounter a ten. I we, you know, they come across. Uh, it said uh, getting close to noon, and the raven swoops in for a landing. Corny screams at no one in particular. Yeah, I've been uh, reading. Uh, uh, I got that one from reading uh, Game of Thrones. Not guilty, uh, but they got a they got a crow that kind of follows them around for a while, screaming for corn. Uh, now he comes back, snorts more. So after the bird people are long gone, uh, spot check not far from the road is a thicket of sweet thistle. Now, as you go about collecting bags of sweet thistle, you hear more so croon. Oh, how cute miniature elves! Glancing towards her, you spot yeah she'd picked up an NPC temporarily because uh, there's things along the way. Like in this case, the sweet thistle is a, a herb uh, it, that can be used in oil cooking and for medicinal purposes, and it grows in, in, in limited locations. And uh, part of the uh, encounter with the general store ma uh, owner in, in uh, Crystal Gorge was to give them a list of things to keep an eye out for, and how you know if they could collect some, he would reward them handsomely for that material. So this is alternate ways for my two drovers to have side adventures and, uh, and make a little extra coin on the side. So what we have is in the sweet thistle is a bunch of tiny little fey about four inches tall. These are shimmerlings and 
yeah, they they had a, quite an adventure with the Shermerlings. Uh, about put them all to sleep. Uh, let's see. Later, uh, Counter Eleven's the King's Patrol. Day six, the weather's partly warm. Counter twelve, the broken wagon. Day seven, the weather warm and sunny. Arrive at the clan, the home of Clan Hammer Iron. It's a small, small dwarven uh, hold that holds about a thousand dwarves and a few hundred humans, and uh, is part of the Crystal Gorge uh, outer outer community. Uh, the Rand Embers Inn, Blacklist Smithy, etc., etc. So, I got a mimic, I got a fireball. So, coming around a sharp bend in the road, you spot a wine barrel. It's in good shape. In good shape, it appears to have rolled off another wagon only recently, except it's a mimic. All right, I used them creatively. They had a venture dealing with that. Uh, wolf pack, an orc raid, the grill ambush. Then gets Daryl store. Pothrarium, Zanzoon's Tavern, Daggett's Hall, so they've returned to the gorge for, the, for their first uh, circuit. And then Hog Swat Inn, Weather Cold and Snow Flurries, Rock Slide, Cold and Snowy, Fire and Ice. Back to Hogswat Inn. All right, so you get you get the idea, right? All right, so there you go. Just a little bit. I didn't think to put page numbers on it, so I don't know how many pages are there. But this this campaign, I think, ran about six months. We went about six months, so you figure four times a month. You know, once every Friday night for six months, uh, 24, 24 sessions or so. It was pretty good. And then we got uh, we ran the course of it, and at that point, everybody agreed that we were we were tired with it, and we went to play the Star Wars campaign for another five months or so. Tell this is Rick. Until next time.